Leaders and elders of the Southeast, Southwest, South South, and the Middle Belt regions have asked President Bola Tinubu to restructure Nigeria based on the recommendations contained in the 2014 CONFAB report. They insist that President Tinubu should take an urgent look at the 2014 National Conference report concluded by 400. 494 of the country's leaders, as well as the All Progressives Congress APC report on true federalism. However, leaders of Southern Kaduna are also not relenting in canvassing for the restructuring of Nigeria and the fate of the people in Kaduna South who have been under constant attacks by militias. They stress that the restructuring of the country would give the minorities a better sense of belonging. They insist that the plight of minorities in the country should occupy the front burner of the restructuring agenda if Nigeria must stand as one indivisible entity. Joining us now from Kaduna is General Zamani Lekwot, Chairman, Southern Kaduna Elders Forum and Chairman of Middle Belt Elders Forum and former military governor of River State. First, little di digression from our main topic as a former military governor of River State. Uh, welcome to the show, sir. I'd like to ask you, what can you say concerning the developments in the Thank state? You. Oh, in the River State? Yes, sir. Just a little digression before we go into the main topic for today. Okay. Kaduna is very far away from River State. I have not been there for a long time. But from experience, it's a beautiful place. The River Rhine areas, the Ablan areas, it's a collection of different uh, ethnic minorities who have lived together for many years in harmony. So during my humble tenure there of three years as the military governor, I enjoyed my stay there because of the tremendous cooperation I received. So, being an ethnic nationality myself, I was at home there, and it's a beautiful, a beautiful place. But what is happening now, I'm far away, I cannot say much because I have no access to the facts. No, but Nevertheless, but, but I wish them the best of luck. But General, what we discussed yes. this morning is the uh, role of godfathers in Nigerian politics and how the governor, the incumbent governor of River State has found himself in a situation uh, whereby it is alleged that his godfather, who is in Faraway Abuja, uh, is the one behind impeachment moves against him. How did our well, politics get I've to that said, level? I don't know the facts. Uh, I don't know the facts, but uh, I'm assuming that um, the former governor must have had a hand and influence in his emerging as the governor. That being the case, um, the solution must be proper dialogue in order to uh, resolve whatever differences might be there. So people on the ground will answer this question better. I wish them well. And politics is all about agreement and disagreement. What, bring peace in the, what brings peace in the end must be compromise in the uh, national interest. And so I appeal. All right. Thank you very much, uh, General Lekwood. Now let's go on to the matter on ground this morning, the main issue for uh, our conversation with you, which is restructuring. And um, especially in light of the Southern Kaduna uh, uh, crisis and vis-a-vis -vis Northern Kaduna, first of all, perhaps I'll start by asking what the situation on ground is, because I, I recall that in the last administration, we had quite um, a number of militia attacks. We had a number of um, banditry um, attacks, kidnapping and the likes in Kaduna South. What's the issue on ground? And then how can restructuring help situations like that, not just in southern Kaduna, but across Nigeria as well? Well, um, southern Kaduna citizens 
have lived in peace over the years. We manage our differences with other Nigerians that have found it necessary to come and live with us. Things were going well until Erufai emerged as governor with an agenda to divide the state. And in a recent film clip, he confessed that his agenda was to Islamize Southern Kaduna. Fortunately for us, religion is not an issue because Islam and Christianity, even on the world plane, are the two closest religions. With Jesus as a common prophet, so for Erufai to come with this type of negative agenda was a big surprise. He decided to have nothing to do with Southern Kaduna. What crime did we commit? No crime at all. He also confessed that even at the national level, they used the bandits to win the election in 2015. And when he assumed office here, he also confessed that he knew where the bandits came from. He went to where they were to pay them money to stop killing Southern Kaduna people, which made the situation worse. In the end, he left the state more divided on tribal and religious lines. I say somewhere in a recent interview that in Southern Kaduna, many family compounds have both Muslims and Christians. In some instances, traditional religious people. We have no problem at all. So he planted that seed of discord. And since he left, I'm happy to say, with the change in government, the tempo of the killings and destruction of villages has drastically reduced because of the current positive posture of Senator Obasani, his successor in office. In fact, he has come up with an initiative to set up a meeting between elders from Northern Kaduna and Southern Kaduna. We have held two meetings that were very, very successful. So a ray of sunshine has appeared at the end of the tunnel. We're ever ready to cooperate with whoever God put on top of us as the governor. On the national plane, in respect of the restructuring issue, I was a member of the 2014 National Conference. We took a global look of this issue. Now, the British ruled us for many years, and the template they left behind was based on their experience at home. Three regions were created with semi-autonomy. When independence came in 1960, in 63 specifically, the Midwest region was created. Things were going relatively smoothly until the first coup came to dissolve the regions. The rest is history. A complex federation like Nigeria need special arrangements. And borrowing a leaf from abroad, the largest democracy in the world is India, with a population of about 1.3 or 4 billion. Their setup is very unique. Brazil is another federation. So the idea of restructuring is to correct the mistakes of the past. 
because our current system, including the constitution, are not functioning well because of hitches here and there. States were created by the military regimes. From that time, we have seen that creation, uh, state creation is a versatile vehicle for rapid development. Since things are not working properly, let us rearrange in that regard the 2014 National Conference report made some recommendations. And um, the recommendations are all embracing. What is needed now is for the current government to take a look at that report and then choose what it can implement. The creation of a few states was recommended. Adjustment of boundaries here and there was also recommended. So the whole aim is to carry every group along. And of course, sitting down and exchanging views, listening to all sorts of views with a view to charting a more credible way forward. I think that is not too much. If we don't do that, okay. we are going to continue to face okay, what we are facing. Okay. Because democracy is all about listening, compromising, okay. and crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Okay, sir. This is all I can say. Okay, sir. Uh, so you figured Nasil Arafai in the recent crisis in southern Kaduna, but you and I know, sir, that it's deeper than that. Uh, there was a crisis in Zango Kataf at some point that you said in a recent interview that you were framed for. And even before that crisis, the Zango Kataf crisis between the Muslims and the Christians spanned way back the 30s in this country. We've had that crisis even before the Willings report that talked about creation of states to be able to settle out the minorities. State creation came about because they felt the minorities were unfairly treated when we had the regional system. And in the middle 60s, those that complained in the Midwest of how the dominant Yoruba group treated them finally got their Midwest states. But it looks as though every step we have taken to settle the problem of the minorities have not worked. At some point, we thought Willing's report would be a silver bullet. It's not worked. Now, we think restructure is a solution. So once you fragment even further in the, space, in the spirit of favoring the minorities, does it really solve the problem? Or more minorities now emerge? Well, the overall aim is to ensure equity and justice. Creating more states or adjusting boundary cannot add to the problem. When the Midwest region was created, huh, progress started. Later, when the military created more state, it was divided into two. Go there and see the development that has taken place. It is not possible to grant every ethnic group a state as such, but an appropriate regrouping will enhance the authenticity of democracy. To quote one expert, democracy is based on equity and justice. That is what promotes peace. I will take you back to the British model. 
You have the English, the Scottish, the Welsh, and the Irish. Great Britain. They have been managing their differences very well. That was the template they left behind. So, given the massive resources Nigeria has, restructuring will challenge every group to rise and take maximum advantage of its resources. What we have now is dependence on the federal government because of the oil money, which is now dwindling. That leaves the solid minerals and agriculture in the rural areas lying dormant. So we in southern Kaduna are saying that we deserve a Gurara state in terms of population, land mass, resources, and trained manpower. Grant us that Gurara state. That will not stop us from cooperating with our brothers in the north. We are still here. The southwest was one region before. So is the southeast. All right. You spoke about the Willing Commission. All that the Willing Commission wanted to do, according to the report, was to create the COR region and Middle Belt region. So, but the report suggested a postponement of uh, granting of independence by two years in order to sort this out. The political class at that time uh, assured the British that if given the independence, they were going to resolve that. When independence was granted, they didn't do anything. So uh, this request, asking the government to take a second look at this, is all parts of the movements that will promote peace and stability. Granting us a rural state, like a few others, will not interfere with fellow Nigerians who are already living with us in peace from pursuing their business. So if you give our state, giving us the executive, the judiciary, and legislature, our cultural heritage within the Constitution will come into play. And I think it's a good idea because one of the great federations is the United States and they have over 50 states. Some states are richer than others, but it's one country. Anywhere you meet an American, he will be proud to tell you where he's come from, but he is a proud American. So this is what we should do. We borrowed the presidential system from there, but unfortunately, we do not, we are not using the modalities. They have three types of police, FBI, state, and county. Here we have only one federal police command. There are few on the ground, they lack equipment, and so forth. So we should create, the states should be allowed to rearrange their security, uh, security uh, uh, setup. If we had state police in place today, the level of banditry would not have reached where it is. So given the fact that our political class shout democracy, but some of the things done are anything but democracy. So the subdivision is meant to reinforce the federal structure. Okay, we take a short break. When we return, 
The conversation with General Zamani Lekwot will continue. Our guest is still General Zamani Lekwot, Chairman, Southern Kaduna Elders Forum. Well, if you can hear me clearly now, sir, I'll just go through the uh, questions uh, briefly. One, why didn't you right. or did you make a similar recommendation to President Buhari, who being your colleague in the military, uh, probably would have been easier for you to relate with? And what gives you the confidence that President Tinubu will do it? In one interview, you said there is no north. Um, how do you mean? And then three, you were in South Sudan. You've been talking about creation of states uh, and all of that. Uh, but uh, after, after South, uh, South Sudan was created out of Sudan, you were in Sudan uh, on the UN mission. It didn't stop the people of South Sudan fighting among themselves. What is the guarantee that even if Southern Kaduna uh, gets a state of his own, the infighting among the people will disappear? Well, point of correction, I was never in, in Sudan. Okay. I thought you were in the UN mission. I retired mission. over 30 years ago. Okay. No. I, um, no. I retired from the service over 30 years ago. Hmm. I'm an old man now, managing, managing, managing my uh, life. Number two. Well, yes. General Buhari is our colleague. There is no doubt about it. But I remember very well when somebody asked him about this 2014 National Conference report. He said he hadn't read it. He had no intention to read it, that it was for the archives, which was a shocking surprise. Because by our training, as generals, when an issue arises, before we conclude, we have to examine all the manifestations. All he needed to do, as I've said somewhere, was to look at the report or set up a committee, look at the report and choose the few things his government could implement. He did neither. That, recommend, that uh, report, the recommendation, contained a lot of practical solutions to our problems. Now, the problems were still staring at him in the eyes. Nevertheless, somewhere down the line, uh, the government set up a committee and uh, Erufai, the governor, state governor, sorry, the federal state governor, they wrote their own report and uh, gave the report a name which I have forgotten now. Since then, no one has heard about it. Then in 2014, 2015, Buhari's government promised to restructure the country. He has agreed some people did not take part in the conference because they didn't believe in it. Since we are running a federation of diverse ethnic nationalities, whether you took part in the conference or not, there will be no harm in looking at what others think. And I think the ultimate solution is dialogue. Let every group have their say. At the end of the day, in the interest of national unity, a way forward will be found. Now, on the example you have cited about Southern Sudan, I think the picture there is different. Why? Even when they were part of the Republic of Sudan, the ethnic nationalities there never saw eye to eye. They were fighting themselves. So what dialogue cannot resolve, harmony can only make it worse. All right. 
our own case, for example, All right. under the then northern Nigeria, there were 12 provinces. Right. Some were larger than others. For example, Zaria province, Sokoto province, Kano province, Bochi, and um, yes, Borno, Adamawa, Benue. All right. I will cite only former Sokoto province. All right. Well, General Former Lerpot. Sokoto province now have three states. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I, I just want to come in here to say, unfortunately, we're running out of time. If you could summarize your thoughts on this very critical issues to deliberate on this morning, and hopefully we have an opportunity to have you back on the show. But just in one sentence, if you could give your closing statements so we can wrap up this interview and hopefully have you back again to continue. Okay, thank you very much. Restructuring Nigeria is the way to go. All right. Because it will give an opportunity to correct the mistakes of the past in order to bring Nigeria back to the race so that peace and tranquility can prevail. Absolutely. Thank you so very much for your time this morning, General Zamani Lekwot. And again, like we mentioned, critical conversation and definitely not the end of it today. Hopefully we have an opportunity to have this another time. Thank you.